Huffaday. I'm Tim Anderson, the Joint Region Mariana Safety Program Director, and welcome to Guam. Guam is a tropical island, home to Anderson Air Force Base and Navy Base Guam. Its average temperature is about 85 degrees, but it fluctuates from the low 70s to the high 90s. It is also a popular tourist attraction due to its plethora of ocean activities, ranging from stand-up paddle boarding, scuba diving, snorkeling, or even just leisure swimming. But with all those activities, comes with a high potential for a mishap. Guam averages about 50 water rescue operations a year, and unfortunately, about one fatality per month. So please pay attention to this video because it's packed with information that will save your life. Guam's picturesque blue waters are perfect for taking those awesome photos for your social media pages and there's no doubt that underwater photos are even more amazing. But the ocean's beauty does hold dangers you must be aware of. Before entering the water, you should be able to recognize hazards such as currents as they are particularly dangerous for even strong swimmers. There are three different types of currents. The first type is the longshore current. A longshore current is an ocean current that moves parallel to the shore and can form at any beach that is exposed to breaking surf. It is caused by large swells sweeping into the shoreline at an angle which pushes water down the length of the beach in one direction. Longshore currents can sweep swimmers and surfers into rip currents, rocks, the reef, and other hazardous areas. In many cases, the longshore current is strong enough to prevent swimmers from being able to keep their feet firmly planted, making it difficult to return to shore. So it is especially dangerous for pets and children. It's best not to let your pets or little ones go into the ocean without first checking for dangerous currents. However, if you are caught in a longshore current, do your best to regain your footing. If you cannot regain your footing, do your best to remain calm, try yelling for help, face your feet in the direction of travel, and try to swim perpendicular to the current, preferably towards the shore. The second type of current is called a rip current. A rip current is caused by waves pushing water towards the shore, which in turn flows back towards the ocean through a narrow channel. The rip current can move at a speed of up to 5 miles per hour, making it almost impossible to swim against. If you become caught in a rip current, the best thing to do is concentrate on staying afloat. Try yelling for help and ride out the rip current until it dissipates. Once in calmer water, either be patient and await rescue or swim back to shore only if there's a safe passage where you can avoid breaking waves. This area where the waves break is called the kill zone. The waves in the kill zone can slam you on top of the reef or suck you under the surface. This is because part of the wave breaks at the top and most of the water actually tucks under the reef, creating a washing machine effect. The next type of current is an undercurrent, which is a flow of water that moves below the surface of the ocean much in the same fashion as a rip or longshore current, only under the surface. If you feel an undercurrent, stay close to the surface and swim towards the shore. The last bit of advice is if you're on the beach and see somebody else caught in a current, call for help from a lifeguard or call 911. Don't immediately dive in and swim out to the person. It's too risky and you yourself may be caught up in the current. Seek professional assistance and only try to attempt rescue if you have a raft or some other type of flotation device that can safely support two people. Now that you're aware of hazardous currents, let's talk about dangerous sea life that you may encounter in any beach on Guam. Most everyone knows you may happen upon eels, sea snakes, and sharks in the ocean. They usually leave humans alone, but if you are bitten by one of these creatures, quickly swim away, control the bleeding, and seek immediate medical attention. But those aren't the only creatures that can hurt you here on Guam. One of the most harmful creatures we have is the cone shell. It is a super toxic venom that can easily kill a person. Colors and patterns of the shell vary. However, the shape is a gradual taper from the wide end to the sharp end, hence the name cone shell. If you find any shell in the ocean that meets this description, leave it alone. Some folks will put the shell in their pocket or in a catch bag 
they carry very close to their body, and that's a bad decision. This animal has a very long needle-like spine, which can easily puncture swimming trunks or a bag, so it's best to admire without touching and swim along. Next are lionfish. They can be found in coral reefs, rocky areas, and lagoons. The lionfish uses its venomous spines for defense, so it's a good idea not to provoke this sea creature. Additionally, if you're stung while scuba diving, be cognizant of your ascent and do not forget your safety stops. Once you surface and are able to, remove anything obstructing the affected area, remove spines, clean and disinfect the wound, control any bleeding, and apply hot water or heat. Initial exposures to toxins will produce a very painful injury and often there will be a mild, localized, or systemic allergic reaction. So it may be beneficial to have a doctor examine you to forestall any adverse allergic reactions. There's also sea urchins you should be wary of. Sea urchins have very long, sharp spines that can easily penetrate skin. The good thing is that sea urchins are stationary in rocky areas and are usually easy to spot if you're in the water. However, if you're walking in the water, stepping on one is a possibility. If you don't have sturdy footwear on, such as diving boots, the brittle spines can easily penetrate then break off in your skin. A puncture from a sea urchin can cause redness and swelling in the area which can lead to severe pain and infection. Multiple deep puncture wounds may cause fatigue, weakness, muscle aches, shock, paralysis, and respiratory failure, which means death may occur. With that said, if you are stung by a sea urchin, remove the large spines with tweezers and gently scrape the smaller pieces with shaving cream and a razor if you can, then follow up with medical attention. Another animal to watch out for is the crown of thorns sea star. It is covered with two to four inch spines that can easily break off in your skin. The thorns can not only puncture your skin even through thick gloves, but also can deliver venom that will cause severe and immediate pain, significant bleeding, and swelling at the puncture site. These reactions usually last about 30 minutes to three hours. More severe reactions can include numbness, tingling, weakness, nausea, vomiting, joint aches, headaches, cough, and in rare cases, paralysis. Good news is that these creatures are bottom dwellers, so potential contact is most likely only during scuba diving. So if contact is made, execute your ascent safely and seek medical attention. You might occasionally come across box jellyfish and the Portuguese man o' war throughout the year, but most sightings are during November through February. They are found on or just below the surface of the water and even washed up on the shore. But don't be fooled by their docile personality. These buggers can sting you in and out of the water. So if you see any type of jellyfish, don't let it touch you. The sting from a Portuguese man o' war is very painful, but not usually deadly. However, a sting from the box jellyfish is extremely painful and can be deadly. If you are stung by either one, rinse with seawater and apply vinegar or isopropyl alcohol. If tentacles are stuck on you, try to remove them with a stick or other rigid objects such as your ID card, but definitely not your bare hands. It is also a very good idea to seek medical attention. And finally, there's the stonefish. Stonefish are masters of camouflage and can blend in so perfectly with their surroundings that it's very difficult to recognize. They lie motionless on the reef while waiting for their prey to swim by. Even though these fish are only about 14 to 20 inches in length, it is the most poisonous fish in the sea. Their highly toxic venom can be ejected into your skin from one or all three of their dorsal spines, which will cause immediate excruciating pain and can be lethal if medical attention is not available right away. To avoid getting injected by one of these fish, you can shuffle your feet while walking with thick water shoes. Otherwise, be extremely vigilant while walking in the ocean. If you come into contact with any harmful sea life, it's best to get medical attention as soon as possible. Guam averages one water-related fatality a month. Each star depicted on this map represents a drowning. The biggest thing to remember is that any beach on Guam has the potential for a mishap. Some beaches and activities on Guam pose a higher risk. Because of that, there are off-limit areas and restricted activities for military personnel, whether permanent party, TDY, or on leave while on Guam. Shark's Hole, located north of Tangisan Beach, and water entry on the ocean side of the cliffs of Paget Point is off-limits. Reef walking is prohibited at all beaches around the island. The definition of a reef is a ridge of jagged rock, coral, or sand 
just above or below the surface of the ocean. Guam's reef is very sharp and it's also where waves break. Even waves that are only a foot or two high still have the momentum and power to knock you over. This is when injuries occur that can lead to a drowning. Also prohibited is jumping or diving from cliffs, rock formations, trees, or other elevated places into the ocean. Underwater exploration of caves or caverns partially or fully submerged is a no-go. For this purpose, impermissible underwater exploration is defined as the swimming with or without scuba gear in underwater environments where there is a possibility of entrapment or restricted egress, meaning the swimmer or diver cannot swim vertically to the surface or exit the underwater environment. This can also be referred to as cave diving or underwater spelunking. The exception to this prohibition is if the diver is trained, certified, and properly equipped to safely accomplish the event. Contact Insulation Safety by dialing 339-SAFE for the Naval Base Guam Safety Office or 366-SAFE for the Anderson Air Force Base Safety Office for further information on off-limit areas and restricted activities. Shallow water blackout occurs when a person hyperventilates before going underwater. This condition is often experienced by snorkelers or freedivers. The breathing reflex is controlled by the level of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. Hyperventilation decreases the amount of carbon dioxide, delays the breathing reflex, making it possible for someone to hold their breath until they go unconscious. This usually happens in shallow water when someone is ascending from their dive. The safest practice is to avoid the kind of overexertion frequently associated with hyperventilation and to know your limits. If you really want to stay underwater longer, perhaps take up scuba diving lessons. Being on the water is just as enjoyable as being in it. If you plan on spending a day out on the water, here are some things to keep in mind. Make sure there's at least one life jacket on board for each person. All children and those who are inexperienced or non-swimmers must wear life jackets. Ensure the boat is equipped with the required visual distress signals such as flares and lights. Being able to signal rescuers can mean the difference between being found or not. If operating the boat offshore, make sure it is equipped with a working radio. Although CB radios are popular, their power and range is limited to a distance of 3 miles. The preferred radio to carry is the VHF FM radio all Coast Guard units monitor, which has a range of more than 50 miles. In addition to radio, many commercial and recreational boats must carry an emergency position indicating radio beacon. The EPIRB is a small radio transmitter designed to transmit the international distress signal. Boats, airplanes, and even satellites can pick up the signal. Those receiving the signal relay it to the nearest rescue agency which uses the signal as a homing device to pinpoint the location of the international distress signal. Also, file a float plan. Let someone on land know where you'll be going, when you're leaving, and when you expect to return. Carry extra fuel, food, and water, and any tools you may need to make repairs if a mechanical difficulty arises. Make sure the boat has an adequate anchor and line suitable for use in the area. Remember, ocean floor drop-off can be severe and very deep. Don't operate a boat in designated swimming and diving areas, and don't operate a boat if you're drinking alcohol or taking medications. Knowing where you're going and weather conditions before you head to the beach is always good practice. Keep a cell phone with you at all times if possible. Contact the local dive shops for information on areas you intend to scuba dive or snorkel. You can also dial 211 from an off baseline or 101 from an on baseline for information on surf, winds, and tide conditions. Local TV, radio, and newspapers also publish this information. The US Coast Guard also has an app you can download on your phone that enables you to request emergency assistance through GPS coordinates, report a hazard or pollution, and much more. Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 25, or HSC-25, works with the Coast Guard and the Government of Guam's first responders for search and rescue operations. Response time can take up to a couple of hours, depending on the information. Though search and rescue operations are available, don't rely on them. You are the first line of defense when it comes to your water safety. It 
it's a very safe practice to inform others such as family members or friends if you plan a day on the water and where exactly you'll be, how long you plan to be in the water, and when you plan to return so someone can call for help if you're overdue. Be sure to notify them once you get out of the water. Remember these tips as well. Swim only where lifeguards are present or where it is safe for swimming. Never swim, snorkel, or dive alone. Always have a buddy with you and keep an eye on each other. While in the water, wear protective footwear to prevent painful coral cuts or stepping on sea urchins. Wearing hand protection is a good idea as well. Wear fins when you snorkel. There are some strong currents here, especially when the tide is going out. You may need the power fins can give you. When snorkeling, wear a snorkeler's vest. This will help you stay afloat if you become tired or the current pulls you out to sea. Become familiar with the dangerous aquatic life in these waters. Treat all shells as poisonous and don't handle them. Cancel snorkeling, diving, or boating plans when weather forecasters have issued hazardous surf or small craft warnings. Rip currents usually occur in areas where there is a cut in the reef. Do not swim in these areas when hazardous surf is likely. So now you know, Guam's beautiful ocean has many potential hazards, but with a few safety precautions, you can make your time here on Guam unforgettable and most enjoyable. And above all, be smart and stay safe.